<laughs> Hello, my friends. Oh, well, I'm doing a uh, whatever day reads. <laughs> Today's Sunday. Uh, Idjit Reads and Rambles has used whatever day reads to talk about recent reads, and I quite like that. Uh, tomorrow I am leaving for a week and I just wanted to get caught up on stuff that I've read before I go because I'm planning to uh, blog while I'm on vacation. I am going to the Vancouver Writers Fest and so there'll be a lot of book related content as well as the beautiful city of Vancouver. My uh, sweetie is holding down the fort at home. She'll be here but I still had to you know, use up the kind of groceries that uh, I use in the fridge, like uh, cream, whipping cream, which I got to make ice cream and I hadn't made it yet. So today I made sour cherry ice cream and chocolate ice cream. Just plain flavors because that's what Lori likes. She doesn't care for it when I get all exotic and make lavender lemon or caramel and nutmeg and to me, that's all the fun in <laughs> creating ice cream. I use a really, really simple recipe that's basically just whipping cream and sweetened condensed milk with various flavorings or, uh, yeah. I can link the recipe for those of you who are interested. And yesterday, our next door neighbor gave us this giant cabbage, so I made it into sauerkraut. <laughs> so one more thing to add to the list of things to do, things accomplished. Feels good. I got my short story advent calendar this past week. Actually, Lori got it for me. It came in the mail. And so this is um, one like chapbook short story that you can read every day in December, starting from the 1st till the 25th of December and oh, it's such a treat. So I will leave a link below for those of you who are interested in the short story advent calendar. And I finished four books since my Friday reads. Two of them are interlibrary loan books, so I'm glad that I can get those back to the library today. And two of them are audiobooks. I am going to start with uh, a French language book from Quebec, Sauvagine. It's by Gabrielle Filto Chiba. Uh, so far, this one has not been translated into English. I'm really hoping that it will be so even more people can enjoy it. It has been a finalist for a number of literary awards. And it's actually the middle of a trilogy. A central character, Raffaella, in this novel is a wildlife conservation officer in Kamouraska, the part of Quebec that is um, right next to the U.S. border. And uh, it's an eco-feminist wilderness, wilderness survival and psychological thriller and romance and it's a lesbian story. Raphael is a lesbian. I'm so glad that Anne Novella recommended this to me. She also recommended The Wall by Marlene Haushofer, which I also enjoyed. Solid recommendations, Anne. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, there are some farmers he in here who have an attitude towards coyotes that I've encountered before. Um, coyotes are vermin to be destroyed. I grew up on a farm. I've um, experience that attitude firsthand. Um, but also it reminded me of Barbara Kingsolver's book Prodigal Summer because that's a dynamic that's happening in that one. And it reminds me that Barbara Kingsolver has a new book coming out, Demon Copperhead, um, just in the next few days and I'm looking forward to that. Oh, and another thing about this book is the author has also created illustrations in it and uh, they're quite wonderful. You can't really see the cover. She did the cover as well. I'm going to see if I can... Anyway, for those of you who are francophone, I do recommend this. 
Oh yeah, the other thing about this, because it's set in Kemuraska, the other thing it brought to mind, oh, when I was 14 or 15 years old, there was a movie on CBC French language TV, Kemuraska, based on the book by Anne Hébert. And I remember I watched this movie and I could not figure out what exactly was going on, um, but that prompted me to pick up the novel back then, um, as I said, when I was a teenager. So sometimes that's how it is. All the reasons we pick up a book, eh? So the, the first of the two audiobooks that I finished I want to tell you about is called Fen, Bog, and Swamp. The subtitle is a short history of peatland destruction and its role in the climate crisis. And it is a short audiobook. Uh, it's only five hours long. The book is by Annie Prue and read by Gabra Zachman. Uh, I heard about this from somebody on Booktube. Uh, I don't remember who you are. If you're watching, <laughs> please let me know in the comments. And at first I thought it might be too much like a book that I read earlier this year, Swampland, by Ed Struzik. Well, it turns out there is a lot to say about bogs, peatland, and swamps, because there was hardly any overlap, and both are, um, both are really good. I think I prefer swamplands over fen, bog, and swamp, only because, um, what Annie Prue had to insert about her own experiences, I felt didn't add a lot to the book as a whole. But it's not a long book and there's a lot of interesting things in it. Well, like for example, Prue wanted, was trying to find out more about Finland's and so she ordered a print-on-demand uh, classic book called Fenland Past and Present. It was published in 1878 and back in those days the publisher would include a list of subscribers because before they would um, print a expensive book they wanted to make sure they had enough people who would buy it. And in the list of subscribers was Alfred Lord Tennyson. Annie Prue said that after Tennyson's name, it said Poet Laureate, and somebody had scratched that out and written above his name, Plagiarist and Ass. <laughs> so, interesting marginalia. Uh, I thought of so many novels that are set in marsh and swamp, swamp lands and stuff as I was listening to this audiobook and I'm sure you can as well. It's a very evocative kind of setting. So two that come immediately to mind are one by Jan Mark called Useful Idiots and another one is Chime by Franny Billingsley. I'm moving on to the next audiobook which was much longer, 18 hours long. It is called The Myth of Normal, subtitled Trauma, Illness, and Healing in a Toxic Culture. It's by Gabor Maté, and he wrote it with his son Daniel Maté, and the audio is read by Daniel. It's a, sort of a self-help book, I guess. So it's about the mind-body connection and its importance to our well-being. and. The author stresses how humans are all inter interconnected. Actually, we are interconnected with all the rest of nature. He talks about his own history. He was a baby during World War II in Hungary, uh, Jewish, and he was saved by um, being hidden with a Christian woman. His grandparents died in the Holocaust. Uh, and he does talk about how that has affected his own health. Um, he quotes some indigenous writers that I know, like Helen Knott and her book In Her Own Moccasins, and also Jessie Thistle, 
who wrote From the Ashes. Some of the points that have kind of stuck with me include that researchers found that a bad job is worse for your health than being unemployed and also that only about 25% of public health is attributable to health care and a full 50% is determined by social and economic environments. There is a fair bit in there about loneliness and there were ties to other things that I've been reading lately, like Kristen Radke's CQ, which is about loneliness, and I talked about it in my Friday reads. Um, Sauvagine, that, the French novel that I started this video with. This central character is living alone until she meets a woman that she's attracted to. Um, and the next book that I'm going to tell you about. There's a lot about loneliness in that as well. One of the joys of reading is <laughs> making all these connections. Okay, well, I had to shift because <laughs> the sun was really in my eyes. So I could show you the cover of this book, Interlibrary Loan, Alberta and Freedom by Cora Sandel but it is pretty boring so without the dust jacket. The translator is Elizabeth Roken, translated from Norwegian. I heard about this book from Sean the Book Maniac and I just finished a buddy read with Marilyn Maya Mendoza. It was a fantastic experience. Loved the book to bits. Her use of language, her character, Alberta, um, the way she depicts what life is like, uh, and this is largely autobiographical, this novel. It is set in Paris in the early 20th century, and it's about a woman who is going to be a writer. She has been supporting herself um, mostly through pawning uh, every possession that she has and also doing non-fiction writing for Norwegian magazines. What she wants to write is her own fiction. And it, it's coming to that realization. And uh, so many stories are about how women have such constraints on their choices, constraints placed by society based on gender and class mostly. Alberta is so firm about what she doesn't want but not sure what she does want and so that's what she keeps moving towards as she's figuring that out in this book and it is a depiction of a particular way of life. There are a lot of other secondary characters in it and a particular time in history and a particular place. I've been to Paris quite a few times and oh, she just made it so alive. I don't think you've, you need to have been there to get that sense from this book because her, her writing is just that good. It opens with Alberta posing as a model for a painter. And I'll just give you a little sample of the type, the style of the writing. Alberta took off her clothes as if she were jumping into the sea, a little giddily, feeling that it was a matter of now or never. She undid one button here, another there, and her clothes slid down round her all at once. Before they reached the floor, she seized them, stepped out of them, and put them in a heap on a chair. Then she stepped onto the model stand and faced reality boldly. She did not slouch ashamed with her hips or her head, 
but clenched her hands slightly and looked at Mr. Digby straight in the eye while she gradually took up her position. Then she stood. So that's it for what I've finished in the last few days. Uh, I hope you will come back and vicariously take part in my trip to Vancouver and the Vancouver Writers' Festival. Thank you so much for watching and please uh, leave me some comments down below. I love hearing from you. Bye for now.